Okay, so I, I'm I'm back in my solar system. I don't have everything built and I don't have everything textured, but I have enough, I think, to start kind of mocking up and get a proof of concept in terms of how I want this animation to work. Now, I do want to build a really quick, just a real simple sun texture, and I'll go back and, and, uh, and modify this later, but I just want to get something in the center of my solar system that, that you know, isn't just gray. So I want to just create a nice flat texture Call that sun, and uh, like I said, I'll, I'll get back to that a little bit later. Uh, but so far, so good. I got you know a couple different things textured. Maybe I'll uh, even do just a real quick Venus uh, texture. And rather than picking up the color map at this point, which I'll do the color map JPEG, I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, for the sake of reference, I'll just uh, I'll I'll throw something in here so that we have uh, a little bit more contrast in the scene. Okay, so I'll just see. Don't want to apply that to the group. I'll just reveal Venus, uh, drag and drop, and, and I'm not going to worry about Mars right now. Um, <clears throat> at least I have something to look at, okay? Now, at this point, when I scrub the playhead, um, I, I inadvertently, or, or actually, I, I was just experimenting with animating uh, the Earth here. Now, what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to quickly get rid of the orbit, or I'll modify the orbit more accurately. I'm going to select the Earth orbit. As I scrub the playhead, you can see that over the course of 90 frames, I have uh, the Earth. So I have two choices here. I could take the existing animation uh, and I could reconfigure it so that it's it's uh, ro rotating 360 degrees. Uh, in other words, it's orbiting one time around. Uh, or I could just rebuild the animation from the ground up. And I think what I want to do is just take the existing animation that I have. Okay, so I'm starting at a heading rotation of zero. I'm advancing the playhead, and uh, I'll just key in the value of 360 and hit return and mark that last keyframe. Okay, and so the effect that I get is that I get the Earth orbiting the Sun. Now, there's several different ways to build that animation if I wanted to. Uh, let me just reverse engineer this. I'll go to Window, Timeline. Uh, I see the Earth orbit. And uh, let's see, I've animated the clouds once before. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just take the Earth orbit. I'll take the Earth orbit rotation, or maybe just the whole Earth orbit, and I'll, uh, I'll delete that animation. So I'll just I'll delete everything. I can always animate the clouds later. So now I have absolutely no animation happening inside my scene. And uh, I'll, I'll rebuild this uh, with an alternative method. So I'm going to select the Earth orbit, playheads at the beginning of time, and I'll mark that first keyframe. I'll grab the rotation tool, advance the playhead. Uh, this time I'm just going to manually rotate it. Uh, I'm holding down the shift key and I'm watching the heads up display until I get a snap to 360 degrees. And uh, the heading went to, to 720 for some reason. Let me undo that. That's because I'm starting off for some reason with a heading rotation of 360. Let me just zero that out. Uh, actually, I need to zero that back out on the keyframe. Click on the keyframe to update that. And again, I'll advance the playhead and I'll rotate that 360 degrees. Back it up just a little bit and mark that keyframe. I'll rewind and play to make sure I get the uh, the results that I want, and so now I have one full orbit. I'm not too concerned about <clears throat> the fact that that's over 90 frames. Uh, I just want to get the mechanics of the animation down, and I'll, uh, I'll 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 fix that later. I'll bump this up to 900 animation, uh, excuse me, 900 frames or more, and uh, and 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 get that uh, animation uh, timing down just right. Now the beautiful thing about this simulation that we're going to create. Keep in mind, we have eight planets or nine planets, if you're old school and want to throw in Pluto, uh, we have eight planets that we need to animate, okay? And if I were to do this the old-fashioned way, if I were to take the Mercury uh, orbit and I were to animate that manually, if I redistribute the Earth animation for more than nine, 90 frames, if I'm getting 900 frames, i got to go back and i gotta, I got to change the animation for each one of the planets. Now, my strategy here, my goal for this project is to build an effective solar system animation that's driven by the Earth rotation. Excuse me, the Earth orbit. Okay, so everything's going to be driven off of just two keyframes. 
until we introduce some cameras and some effects and you know want to do some other things and maybe make it more narrative uh, but for now I want all the planets to animate based on the uh, the orbit of the earth and there's a really cool way that we can do that and that's by leveraging Expresso now we talked a little bit about Expresso in the in the uh, motion class and we we leveraged it by using set driven keys we're gonna use a completely different strategy this time uh, that will yield uh, kind of similar results but give us a lot of control I'll, I'll uh, introduce this process and this concept and I'll go back and I'll review it a couple of times uh, and it's okay if you feel a little, little clunky or a little clumsy getting this up and running the first time uh, because it, it, it's 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 pretty unique and it's something that we haven't really taken a deep dive into at this point so the first thing is to make sure that you have an earth orbit animation okay and right now my earth orbit this is the thing that's animating right and so when I select it, I can see the keyframes down here in the timeline. And when I scrub the playhead, I see my Earth orbiting. Now, <clears throat> that's the animation that's going to drive everything. Okay, and so what I want to do uh, is I want to generate an Expresso tag. Now, I actually don't have to do this on the Earth orbit. Um, I just need it attached to something. But because the Earth orbit is the driver animation, it makes sense to me that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attach it to the Earth orbit. I'm going to right click or control click and go to Cinema 4D Tags and I'm looking for an Expresso tag. Once I add an Expresso tag, I get a little tag that pops up here on the right side of Earth Orbit. And by default, that opens up the Expresso editor. Now, if I close the Expresso editor and I want to reopen it, I can just double click on that tag and that reopens the Expresso editor. Now, Expresso is a node based uh, information system that allows you to uh, track and influence pretty much any of the data that's happening inside Cinema 4D. Okay, now it can get really complex, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple uh, to get started. And, uh, and and you'll see that once you get the procedure down of this and get the logic down, things fall into place really quickly. So here's the concept. Okay, I've, I've attached an Expresso tag to Earth Orbit. And again, that tag can exist on anything. It doesn't really matter where it's at, but I wanna double click on it if I don't already have my Expresso editor open. Now the Expresso editor is kind of a, a cool thing. This is a node-based or a visual-based system uh, that allows us to, to output and input data from one object to the next. Now what I mean by that is I can take the Earth orbit and click and drag that into my Expresso manager and now I have an Earth orbit node. Okay, now this node consists of an input and an output, okay? Uh, and, and we'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. Um, but I can, I can you know, resize this and I can do a number of things, but I want my Earth orbit to drive another orbit, okay? And, and for the sake of this initial demonstration, I'm gonna use my Venus orbit. So I'm gonna drag my Venus orbit into the equation, okay? I have the Earth orbit, and remember the Earth orbit, let me just close my Expresso editor here. When I scrub the playhead, if I have my Earth orbit selected, and I scrub my playhead, there's a value, the rotation heading is changing as the frames advance, okay? So I know that my the whole animation is basically an H rotation of the Earth orbit, okay? So the H rotation, the heading rotation, is the thing that's changing. So there's a value of that that's, that's, uh, uh, that's changing over time. Now what I can do is on the right side of this Earth orbit node, if I click on the little red tag here, <clears throat> what I can do is I'm setting an output uh, of a coordinate. I'm going to go down and, and, and let me just say that the, the quicker you filter out all of this other stuff here, uh, the faster we'll get tuned into Expresso. Uh, there's some basic properties here which uh, uh, we don't really want to uh, bother with. Pretty much everything for this class is going to be a coordinate output. Okay. So I'm just clicking on this little red side of the Earth orbit. I'm looking for a coordinate, specifically a rotation, and even more specifically, a rotation H. Okay, so just I'm, I'm targeting one specific parameter, a rotation H. So my Earth orbit node is now outputting its rotation H. And the way that a node-based editor works is that we now have this output and we can draw lines or, or draw strings and attach different objects together. And now you'll notice that um, uh, 
as I as I drag this around, I'm, I'm getting a line. But what I want to do is on the input side of the Venus orbit, I also want to track the the coordinate rotation h. Okay. So if I look at Earth orbit, what I have is an output. <clears throat> excuse me. And that output is whatever the value of h is down here. And at frame 42, it happens to be 162 degrees. What I can do is I can tie the output of the Earth orbit to the input of the Venus orbit. Okay? Now, let me just kind of crunch that down. I'm going to use this navigation tool, this pan tool. Just like in the viewport, I could hold down the number one key and kind of click and drag that around. Basically, what I've established is that right now, the Earth H rotation is the same and driving the Venus H rotation. Let me close this so that we can see this. If I rewind and I hit play, what I should get is that the uh, Earth rotation and the Venus rotation, or excuse me, orbit, are linked at this point. Okay, and you're probably scratching your head saying, well, what the heck, why do we jump into Espresso, spend all that time looking at all that crazy stuff just to get a parent-child uh, association? Well, one of the really cool things about Espresso is that uh, we don't actually want a direct one-to-one -one ratio between the Earth rotation and the Venus rotation. But what we want is we definitely want that Earth to drive everything, but we want it to drive it proportionally uh, different for each planet. So what I can do is I can break this, uh, I can break this association here by simply rolling over the string uh, and 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 dragging it off, and that kind of breaks the connection. Okay. And what I can do, and don't worry, don't panic. I, I will review this process. Uh, what I can do is right click or control click and build a new node. Okay, and the kind of node that I want to create, and again, it, it's very uh, valuable if you can kind of filter out all the stuff that we're not going to use. I want to create a new node. It's going to be an Espresso node, and I want to calculate something. So this is where all the basic math functions are, and I want just a really simple math function. So I'm, again, I'm right clicking, going to new node, I'm going to Espresso. Calculate math. And now I get a math node. And, and, and what you can do with the math node is that I'm going to tie the earth output to the math node input. With the math node selected down here in the attributes manager, I can actually influence uh, what this value does. Okay, And right now it's a real number. Uh, so in other words, the output of my earth rotation uh, is going to be multiplied. So I'll just click this function to multiply. Uh, by whatever value I, I, I place on this input here. Now, this input number two, I'm just going to kind of hard code uh, this ratio in. And uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I want Venus to orbit twice as fast as the Earth. Okay, so I'm going to type in the value of two. Okay, so for every one degree that my Earth is orbiting, it's multiplying that degree and, and basically, you know, translating that to two degrees for the Venus orbit, okay? So my Earth orbit is outputting H. It's passing through a math node, which is then multiplying that value by two. I'm going to take that output and then connect it to back to the H rotation. Now, if everything worked properly, and I'll just delete that, I'll scrub my playhead back, and I'll scrub forward, and I can see that actually now that's working perfect, okay? Venus orbits twice as fast as Earth. So that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. Now, I'm going to pause this presentation. I'll scrap that whole Espresso tag, and I'll review that process from the ground up. And I will also share with you in the Lessons folder uh, a real simple table of some of the notes that I made uh, that I want to get started with uh, in, in terms of uh, both the scale of my models, uh, maybe the, 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 the distance from... Uh, the sun that they, you know, what what they actually are versus what you know maybe what what they will be, or maybe I'll be just intuitive about that, uh, and and what my and what some of my basic uh, math node numbers are going to be. Okay, and we'll we'll catch up and do that in the uh, next presentation.